Now, also another hot button issue I need yeah. to ask you about is you, you talk on the premiere that you and Jamal broke up and yeah. you kind of blamed it on COVID a little bit. Uh -huh. And I have to think that Monique's binder uh -huh. had to play into this a little bit. Well, I didn't blame it on COVID. I said what it was was we can't really see each other. Okay. But the binder and that whole situation. The story of Pastor Jamal Bryant certainly paints a controversial picture. His life and career have been marked by significant achievements and equally significant scandals, particularly regarding his personal conduct and relationships. Jamal Bryant, born May 21, 1971, son of a preacher, struggled academically, dropped out of high school. So, looks like he's had a lot of controversy in his life, that Jamal Bryant. Welcome back, Warriors. It's me, Linda B. Thank you all so much for joining me here today. Today, I have another video on Jamal Bryant. He's involved. Well, actually, he's getting remarried to a Dr. Carrie Turner. He was divorced from Giselle Bryant due to alleged infidelity, and he admitted to having children with multiple women, children with multiple women. But before we get back to the video, don't forget to like, comment, share, subscribe, hit the notification bell on my way to 40,000 subscribers. And I kindly ask that you watch the video all the way to the very end. Now let's get into it. Eventually pursued higher education with the help of Bishop Eddie Long. Founded Empowerment Temple AIM Church in Baltimore in 2000. Known for incorporating contemporary issues and hip-hop culture into his sermons, appealing to a younger audience. Gained a large following and became a prominent figure in the African-American religious community. Oh, Lord. Look who in this picture. <laughs> Al Sharpton, the race hustler. What you doing in here? Well, you know what? What did I say? People that are a certain way hang together, whether that's good or bad. Whatever you are like, that's the company that you keep. I'll leave it at that. You've been very open over yes. the years about yes. past infidelity. Yes. And in how you grew from that. Yes. What do you make of some people out there who will look at this decision to bring you in as senior pastor as mm new birth trading, one controversy yeah. for possibly another? No, I think that uh, it's right on uh, target to be a match made in heaven. Uh, who else could help lead a church through scars and pain if you've never done so yourself? There's a, a complete distinction between apathy and empathy. You have to live through some things in order to address it and meet it. Multiple instances of infidelity resulting in children with different women, divorced from Giselle Bryant due to infidelity. The relationship remained tumultuous, rumors and allegations of inappropriate relationships with congregation members. Accused of fathering a child with a 17-year-old, though he... I hope that's not true about the 17-year-old. That's un... Women in the congregation... Now, you all may, I'm pretty sure you're probably familiar with New Birth Baptist Church in Atlanta, Georgia, where it was Bishop Eddie Long, who was also had a lot of controversy of his own, and he has since passed. There was a lot going on with Bishop Eddie Long, alleged um, inappropriate behavior with young boys, and he denied it. And now we have Jamal Bryant. And he knows how to fix his words. Well, how can you help somebody if you haven't had any scars of your own? <clears throat> well, I know the Bible says that a congregational leader shall be the husband of one wife and faithful to that wife. He's not living up to First Timothy, is he? He denied the claims. Linked with Reteb Singer tweet, a relationship that ended amidst controversy faced an IRS tax lien for $800,000 in unpaid taxes spanning multiple years. The unpaid taxes were reported for the years 2008, 2010, 2011, 2012, 2014, 2015, 2015, 2016, and 2018. This significant financial issue added to the controversies surrounding his personal and professional life, raising further questions about his management and accountability as a church leader. Proposed 
Unconventional ideas like launching a cannabis business to attract new church members and support economic empowerment. Named pastor of New Birth Missionary Baptist Church, tasked with reviving the congregation and addressing financial debts. Criticized for his lifestyle and teachings, some of which contradict traditional biblical interpretations. An impression that you, you can't let things stand. People, people are shocked at the silence of preachers today. Not that preachers aren't preaching, not that preachers aren't talking, not that preachers don't have sermons, because sermons galore. But it's amazing how we manage to just avoid stuff. Find something else to talk about when when major issues are put before us. I had I alluded to this many times, but I want I want to show it tonight. I listen at uh, um, what was said about the life of our Lord. That if this is true, none of us are saved. If what I'm getting ready to show you, if what I'm about to show you, if it's true, we're all going to hell. Right now, hell bound, hell bound, sitting up in here looking like a, a, a church mother on your way to hell. If what I'm getting ready to show you is true. All that saying that you did tonight, waste of time. If what I'm about to show you is true. Now, this is, of course, as you know, Bishop Patrick Wooden of the Upper Room Church of God in Christ. And I know the comment that he's talking about, but I'm not going to say anything. I'm going to let you hear it. And your mouth is going to drop like Jamal Bryant actually said this. These words actually left this man's mouth and the people still go to that church. Y'all better get it together before you end up in hell. Praise the Lord. If it's true, see, at the risk of being heretical tonight, heretical. might I suggest to you that um, 85% of Jesus' life, he was out of order. They laughing and said, go slow. Oh, you guys are not going slow. You're going fast. A slippery slide right into hell. Jesus is never out of order. He's perfect. And Jamal Bryant, you are a fake teacher. And I don't care who get in the comment section. How the hell you go? Mm, how the heck you going to say something like that about our Lord and Savior, my Lord and Savior, saying he was out of order? Jamal Bryant, you're out of order. And anybody going to that church, out of order. You don't talk about the Lord like that. And you get nasty in my comment section if you want to. I got something for you. 85% of his life, he was doing what he was not called to do. God, y'all done got quiet. 85% of his life, he was not flowing in his God-given function. 85% of his life, he is doing what his natural father wanted. But it did not line up with his divine DNA. 85% of his life, and he's anointed. He's called. He's chosen. And he's wrong. Bryant's use of hip-hop culture and contemporary issues in his sermons has been both praised and criticized. While it appeals to a younger audience, some traditionalists see it as a dilution of biblical teachings. It is a delusion of biblical teaching. First of all, let me go back to what he said about Jesus. Jesus is perfect. Uh, Jesus made no mistakes. He will never make a mistake. He is God. OK, he rose from the dead. He was born of a virgin. If Jesus was wrong, we all headed to hell. And how in the world can anybody sit up in Jamal Bryant's church and sit up there? I can't believe it. And then he got the nerve to say, well, you're not supposed to speak against the Lord's anointed. 
That is Psalm 105, taken completely and entirely out of context. Psalm 105 is not talking about a fake preacher. It is talking about the Jewish people and the land of Israel has nothing to do with what people have interpreted it to be because a lot of scriptures are misinterpreted because we go along with what we've heard. You say something long enough and keep on saying it, people believe it to be true, even though it's dead wrong. It's a lot of scriptures in the Bible completely taken out of context, twisted and turned, and yet people believe them because it's our fault. We know how to read, pick it up, pick up the Bible and read it and study it for ourselves. Pray first and ask God to anoint your brain so you understand it properly. I have to do that because I'm human. I can twist it and make it be something that it's not talking about, you know, truly. And he said at the risk of being heretical, oh, you ain't at the risk of of it. You full-fledged heretical, Jamal Bryant. I'm not going to call you pastor. I'm not calling you reverend. You a hot mess. Anybody going to that church, you need to leave skid marks in the parking lot, leave and don't come back. Because that is a false church. False preacher, false church, false. And all that hip hop stuff going into the church as well to try and appeal to a younger audience. They have enough of the world. They don't need any more of the world. They can walk outside and see the world everywhere on billboards, magazines, at the checkout. You can turn on the TV, turn on the radio and get plenty of the world. They need the pure, unadulterated gospel of Jesus Christ. It's good. You don't need to add to it. Don't take anything away. It's just perfect the way it is. His suggestion to launch a cannabis business to attract new church members and promote economic empowerment was seen as controversial and not in line with traditional Christian values. Statements such as these hoes ain't loyal during a sermon have been criticized for being disrespectful and unfit for a pastor, reflecting poorly on his understanding and application of biblical principles regarding respect and love for others. Called out by religious writers as a false prophet, yet continues to have a significant following. Critics argue that Bryant's numerous instances of infidelity and fathering children out of wedlock are stark contradictions to the moral standards expected of a religious leader. Some of Bryant's sermons and public statements, such as derogatory comments about women and the proposal to incorporate cannabis business within the church, have been viewed as inconsistent with traditional Christian values. That's true, Will Oates. Matter of fact, let's all go eat, drink, and be merry. Go down to the store and get, get, a, get, a, get a cold one. Get a six-pack and just drink it. Because if Jesus was wrong, for 85% of his life, if Jesus was out the will of the Lord, then uh, we're, de- we're done. Now, I would like to think, I don't know if it's true or not, but I would like to think, I could be wrong. I hope that I'm not. I hope I've done a good enough job up until now. I would like to think that if I said something like that here, that you would hesitate at least to see what the punchline is because he's joking he's making a point he's headed somewhere if there is no correction in that I would like to think that would have been your last day here well let me tell you the difference between me and that host pastor uh, that was sitting there Speechless. What you say in a situation like that is, hey, man, you need to fix that from, the, from your seat. Hey, dog, you need to fix that. And you're standing up because you get ready to tell your sound man to cut the mic. And if you don't, he's going to be cut because you cannot let that stand. You cannot let that go unaddressed. That's not true. Jesus was perfect. perfect. Debate over whether his actions disqualify him from spiritual leadership. The debate continues on how to balance holding leaders accountable for their actions while allowing space for redemption and personal growth. 
This dynamic plays out publicly, influencing both criticism and support. The balance between extending grace and holding leaders accountable for moral failings. Concerns about the impact of lowering moral standards within the church community. The case of Pastor Jamal Bryant underscores the complexities of religious leadership, the challenges of maintaining personal integrity, and the consequences of public scrutiny. While he has made significant contributions to his community, his personal failings have sparked ongoing debate about the qualifications and conduct of those in spiritual authority. Well, there you go. That's Bishop Patrick Wooden of the Upper Room Church in Christ calling out Jamal Bryant. Because look, Jesus is perfect. The way Bishop Wooden says is perfect. Jamal Bryant, completely out of order. Heretical, false prophet. He, he There was no punchline. He let that stand like that's what he believes. I'm like, whoa. And people, people are actually sitting in there still going to the church. Shame on y'all. Shame. You better get up out of there. Unless you're just one of those people that are reprobate, who, who have a reprobate mind and you're already just enjoying your sin and you like going to a preacher that tells you it's okay. Well, you're not in a good shape spiritually. You need to repent sincerely and give your whole heart to God and follow him and obey God. And when you hear a false prophet, you get up and leave. You don't sit there. That's saying a lot about the people in that congregation. They'll probably get in the comments and say, you get your mouth off my pastor. You can't make me stop saying anything. I say what I please. You doing what you please, do, doing things willfully, knowing that is wrong, but you sit up there and be up under a preacher that is telling you that Jesus wasn't perfect or isn't perfect. That is a flat out lie. But yeah, you're not mad at him for saying that lie about God, but mad at me for calling it out. The last time I checked, Ephesians chapter five says to expose wickedness, expose it, okay? And again, Psalm 105 is not saying don't put your mouth on God's anointed. It is, but it's not talking about, it's not talking about a fake preacher like Jamal Bryant. It's talking about, God's people, the Jews in the land of Israel, that scripture that most people take it out of context. You know, I've seen T.D. Jakes take it out of context and you know what's been going on with him. So we see what's been going on with people who routinely take scripture out of context. Okay. And yeah, learn the scriptures for what they actually say. That would be a great idea. It really would. You all give me your comments on Jamal Bryant and those comments that he said about Jesus. Now, do you think that Psalm 105 is talking about a fake preacher or what it's actually talking about? You tell me what you think Psalm 105 means. And Ephesians chapter five that talks about exposed wickedness. Thank you all for watching my video thus far. Be blessed. Don't forget to like comment, share, subscribe if you haven't already, and make sure you hit that notification bell. You all can also email me at chat with me, Linda B at gmail.com. Be blessed, love God, your families, these United States of America, and as I always say, march on warriors.